Hi everyone, in this tutorial I want to show you how to edit your photos using a website called Pixlr. Uh, one of the requirements for your website review too is that you have a slideshow within WordPress and I'll show you that in the next tutorial. But in this one I want to talk first about how to edit your photos before you bring them into WordPress. So I'm going to click over here to my next tab which is at pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R.com. You can use Pixlr. If you like Photoshop better, you can use Photoshop, but uh, this is a free web-based tool. Um, and really, whatever you want to use to edit your photos, you can. You can find other apps, and uh, I just like to use Pixlr because it's web-based and it's free. So I'm here at pixlr.com. I'm going to click on this button that says Advanced Pixlr E. Now, this is a Photoshop-like program that allows you to open images and edit them right here on the web. I'm going to go ahead and press open image and you may find some images maybe in your downloads or you know wherever you may have them. I'm going to go ahead and click on this one and press open and already it has discovered that this image is very large and that's something we talk about in our lecture in a lot of times the photos we take with our phones or DSLRs are way too big for websites uh, and so what it's doing is kind of asking, do you want us to uh, bring this down a little bit? And I'm going to choose this web version because this will live on the web. And so I do want to make it a web version. So I'm going to go ahead and apply. It's going to take it down to 1280 by 960, which is still a good size, and press apply. Now this is a photo I took of a camera uh, that I'm going to kind of do a step-by-step -step on how to, you know, add lenses or, you know, what, what to kind of do if you're doing night photography. And so uh, really right here I have the image open. Uh, along the left side you'll see lots of different tools and you may want to experiment with those. Uh, they're very similar to any that you might find in Photoshop. This is the marquee tool to make selections and kind of move things around if you need to. Uh, the lasso tool to make selections where you actually draw them. Uh, it's really a lot that you can do here um, within Pixlr. Uh, what I'm going to do first and foremost is I want to mess with the, um, the color and the transformation. So I'm going to go back in my history to where I, when I opened it. And, and as you make changes and as you, as you do things, you can always go back in your history. And that's down here in the bottom right. Up here, you've got your layers. Um, you can kind of zoom in and zoom out if you need to, to kind of zoom in and fix something. Uh, the idea here is that we're using a photo editor to just kind of make a few small adjustments. You don't need to know a lot about photo editing. There's really, uh, you can get lost in the sauce here. Uh, but really just a few things I want you to be aware of. First, um, when I click up here on image, um, it's going to give us the image size. And this is going to allow us to see how big, uh, how wide, and how tall it is. Now you can change that. You can make it a little bit smaller, make it maybe a thousand by 750. That'll make the image a little bit smaller. That make it lighter and easier to upload. And um, you know, there's other things you could do like rotate it. Sometimes when you open an image, it comes up upside down, uh, and you might want to rotate it to the right or to the left. I'm going to rotate that back because um, that's kind of how I want it. Some other things you might want to do is go to adjustments and then change the brightness. And I might want to bring the brightness up a little bit, maybe bring the contrast up a little bit and let those um, you know, highs kind of stay high and the lows kind of stay lower and go ahead and press apply. And of course, if you want to go back a step, I would just click here back to the rotate button in my steps. Uh, other adjustments that you might want to make are temperature and tint, depending on how you took the photo, what the light was like. I'm getting some natural light here, uh, but also you can see my, my room is actually blue, so I will have to add a little bit of yellow uh, to balance that out, and then you can mess with the tint a little bit as well. Just some small adjustments when it comes to color, also hue and saturation, vibrance. You can bring up the vibrance just a little bit. You don't want to do anything that will... Um, make the, the image change, uh, you know, its message, and you don't really do over editing or, or too many filters, but just a few things that you can do here. And you can really just kind of go through here and, and fix some other adjustments like color balance and things like that if you want to um, focus on maybe something like the uh, exposure, bring out the, the brights a little bit or, or darks, however you want it to look. This allows you to do some of that. Now, um, I won't really mess with a lot of these tools on the left, but one I will choose is the crop. Uh, in your module, uh, it talked about the rule of thirds, and you'll notice that when you press the crop button and 
press and hold it, it gives you a grid that shows you kind of, you know, where you might want to start putting some of these objects. And so you can take these um, edges and kind of move them around and allow these crosshairs to kind of come up in very focal spots. Now this camera is what I want them to look at first. And so I do want that to be in the upper right corner of that crop. So this one is cropped just fine, but you may want to take it and crop other, um, you know, images. So I'll just show you what it looks like when I crop it a little bit. I'll crop it there and then just press apply. This will allow you to apply that crop to that image. Um, and again, you may want to go through here and, and highlight, uh, you know, or, 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 you know, add a brush stroke or something. Um, don't recommend doing too much of that stuff. But one thing I for sure want every student to do is add text. Um, text is going to act as kind of like a watermark to your photo. And it's going to allow us to know that you did edit it and that it is yours. And so it says, do you want to add the new text layer? Yes, I do. And press add. And I'm just going to write John Zmickley. You can add whatever you want, just a way to tag your photo. If you don't want to use uh, text and you actually do have a logo or something that you want to put in this, that's totally fine. Um, but basically, we want some way for us to see that you did edit it. And now I'm going to take this uh, watermark and just kind of put it at the top. I know this doesn't look great, but it's something. So um, anyway, that's a way that I'm going to just sit and edit this one photo. When you're ready to export it, I'm going to go to File, uh, Save. Okay, it's going to allow me to save this onto my desktop, and I'm going to give it a, a, a name, just name it Camera. And uh, we want to save this as a JPEG because it will be um, the smallest quality for this particular photo. And, um, you know, the best quality with the smallest file size is what I meant to say. So we really do want this to be a JPEG and I'm going to press download. And once you do that, you'll notice that it does pop up in your downloads. So now I've edited it. I have um, added a few small features and, and um, you know, some edits. And then I exported it and saved it. Now there's a lot more you can do here, but at the very minimum, that's kind of what we're asking for each of your photos within the gallery requirement on your next post. Um, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to actually add these once you've edited them, how to add them into WordPress for a gallery post.